Hi everyone, here's a new video about how G-Stomper Studio works. Today we're going to see how all the aspects of live recording work. Let's get started. Live recording basically means to tap your sequences in while the sequencer is running, or in other words, to record sequences into G-Stomper. Live recording and latency. Latency is the time from the moment you press a button or a piano key until you hear the sound from the speakers. The latency is a combination of two main factors. One, control input latency, e.g. the display reaction time, or two, the audio output latency. Control input latency, e.g. the display reaction time. The control input latency is the time from the moment you touch the screen or an external MIDI keyboard until the audio system gets notified by the Anjo OS to do something. It is influenced by various factors which strongly depend on your device and the Android version. It can vary from a few milliseconds up to 300 milliseconds or even more. Since the input latency is not known by a particular application, there's no way for G-Stomper to automatically compensate for it. In most cases, especially on newer devices, you don't have to worry about the input latency since touchscreens have got much faster over the last few years. But on older devices, the input latency may be an issue. In this case, your recorded events are always placed a bit too late in the sequence, e.g. one step delayed. To get rid of this delay, G-Stomper provides a latency compensation setting in the setup dialog. Later we'll see in more detail how this parameter works. Audio output latency. The audio output latency is the time from the moment when an application starts to play a sound until you hear it from the speakers. The audio output latency is hardware, operating system and app dependent. A good part of it can be optimised from inside the app, as long as the hardware and operating system allows it. The audio output latency can vary from 37 milliseconds up to over 250 milliseconds. G-Stomper automatically compensates the known part of the audio output latency during the live recording process. But since only one part of the audio output latency is known by the application, it's not always possible to compensate the complete latency. If this is the case, your recorded events might always be placed a little bit late in the sequence, e.g. one step delayed. Fortunately, let's remember that to get rid of this delay, G-Stomper provides a latency compensation setting in the setup dialog. You can check your actual known audio latency, internal latency, in the audio section of the setup dialog. Latency compensation. Latency compensation means in general that if the known audio latency is 200 milliseconds, then the recorded triggers or notes get still placed at the right location. G-Stomper automatically transforms all tapped events to the latency aware timing. Depending on your device, there is a more or less significant unknown latency part. On some devices, this is not even noticeable, but on others, it can be up to twice as much as the known latency part. An important point, to reduce the latency to a minimum, use one of the supported low latency audio systems. A little later we'll talk about some of these systems, such as OpenSL, AudioTrack N or AA Audio. Likewise, it's very important to note that the latency compensation value set by default in the setup dialog box is zero milliseconds. Do not change it if you don't have problems with the event placement while live recording. Only if the recorded triggers notes are always behind the beats should you adjust this value. A good start is to set the value to the middle, then live record again, check the recorded triggers and notes, then adjust the value again, repeating this operation until you find the optimal setting for your device. Audio latency may cause silent recording. Silent recording is automatically enabled if your audio latency is higher than 60 milliseconds. Silent recording means, in other words, that you won't hear the played sounds while you tap sequences in while recording. Let's see an example to clarify this concept. If your device has an audio latency of 100 milliseconds, not regarding the display latency in this context, and you'd live record the sounds in real time, then you would hear the sounds 100 milliseconds delayed. On the other hand, the audio playback of the existing sequence is also 100 milliseconds delayed. When you record in real time, then you intuitively place notes to match with the current playback. So when you push a pad at the same time you hear an existing kick drum, then the kick drum is at 100 milliseconds latency, your tap is at 100 milliseconds latency, and the final audio output of your tap is at 200 milliseconds, 100 plus 100 milliseconds. Due to this delay, it'd be more confusing than helpful to real-time playback a sound while recording if the audio latency is higher than 60 milliseconds. 
Therefore, the real-time playback of the entered sounds is disabled during the recording process. Even if silent recording is applied, you'll of course hear the recorded sounds, but only when the sequencer went through the loop cycle and comes to the already recorded steps. Remember that in order to reduce latency to a minimum, we should use one of the following supported low latency audio systems. Low latency support, open SL, audio track N and A audio. Audio latency less or equal to 40 milliseconds is possible on a 1.4 GHz quad core or higher device running on Android 4.2 or higher in use of one of the supported low latency audio systems. If your device runs on Android 4.2 or higher, 4.x, 5.x, 6.x, then the OpenSL audio system is your best option to get the lowest possible latency results. If your device runs on Android N 7.x or higher, then in most cases it's not required to switch to OpenSL. Android N devices use by default the new AudioTrack M Plus audio system, which provides low latency right out of the box. If your device runs on the Android O 8.1 or higher, then it's recommended to use the A Audio audio system, which offers the best performance in combination with the lowest possible latency results. To switch to another audio system, Open the setup dialog, select the AUD tab and then choose one of the supported audio systems. Evidently how low the latency actually is strongly depends on your device. Select the track you want to record. For beat recording this is optional, you can also record any other track, but if it's selected you'll see the recorded steps immediately. Set the track pad mode to play. Optionally, you can long press the record button to enable the metronome click. Press record and play to start recording. Now while the sequencer is running and recording, tap the beat in using the track buttons. In the same way, live drum recording can be used on the sampler drum pads, the sampler note grid and the sampler track grid. Select the track you want to record and make sure the R ARP stutter switch is set to R ARP. Optionally, if you want to record multiple tracks at once, you can set the track pad mode to R ARP. If you wish, activate the metronome. Press record and play to start recording. Now, while the sequencer is running and recording, touch and or move the R app fader to record the rhythm arpeggio. Additionally, if you have set the trackpad mode to R app, you can use the trackpads to play and record the rhythm arpeggio to multiple tracks. It is important to keep in mind that live rhythm app recording can be used on the sampler drum pads. Select the track you want to record. Enable the note edit mode. If you wish, activate the metronome. Press record and play to start recording. Now, while the sequencer is running and recording, tap the notes in using the piano keys. Select the VA beat track you want to record. If you wish, activate the metronome. Press record and play to start recording. Now while the sequencer is running and recording, tap the notes in using the piano keys. We hope this video has made clear all aspects related to live recording and audio latency, as well as how to properly configure G-Stomper to get the most out of live recordings. Don't forget to give us a like if you liked the video, and if you want to keep up to date with all the news and developments related to G-Stomper, subscribe to our channel and follow us on social networks. See you next time!